So it's definitely not a, uh, a perfect match to the hatch here. <laughs> With the Molten Craw and the White and Chartreuse. But I like the fact that the Molten Craw has got a little more flash to it. A little more color to it. And in my opinion, that is a fantastic little bluegill imitator. So I'm going to shove that all the way up on that bait keeper, that swim jig right there. Got the pinchers pulled apart. And we're going to see what we can do on this uh, little windblown bank here. There we go. That's our first one. Oh, it came off. Dad gum. Oh, I thought he just tapped it. That's my fault. Dad gum, that's my fault. All right. They're definitely on this windblown bank up shallow towards that grass. That's one reason why I went with the 3 8 ounce swim jig instead of a half ounce. But I've got a half ounce chatterbait I'm going to throw in a little bit too. So I'm going to target that windblown area heavily now. And then just kind of keep this thing popping. Up and out of that grass. What do they say? Fishing landing violation, right? That's one little guy right there. He actually hit it sideways. Got my line twisted up around the jig. But that turbo crawl is hanging on tight. I mean, it's not on there perfectly. That's just a bad speedy rig job on my part. But like I was saying, I'm going to be targeting this windblown area up around that grass because oh, God, dang because they're up in that grass if that doesn't tell you dad gum I freaking popped it up out of there out of a big pocket and he smacked it I should definitely be throwing a heavier power rod it's just a medium power tighten that drag down a little bit too I hope we don't miss many more. We got the perfect prefrontal conditions right now. But I mean, pretty soon it'll become entirely too prefrontal. And these fish will just lock down. There we are. There we are. Whoo. Oh man, I mean, I say I should put it on a different rod, but that's one thing I love about throwing on this medium power, because they just feel giant. That is a good, healthy bass right there. Good, healthy bass, right in the corner of the mouth. That old turbo crawl. They're liking that guy. In all honesty, I mean, if I if I had more time, I would pull that down and I'd re-rig it. But I want to take advantage of this. And I just had that thing rigged vertical, just like I mean you would with you know a twin tail grub, um, zoom crawl, you know, which is very similar to. Um, but, you know, the pinchers are just completely different from, you know, your other typical craws. These are meant to have a really good kicking action. Man, oh, man. I tell you what, they are up in that grass. Might want to turn the camera around for this next one. He barely had that, too. Thank you, buddy. I just want to see if you guys can see what I'm seeing when they're hitting it. Let's see if you guys can see this too. Hopefully you can before it's too late. I just spooked up so much stuff back in there. There we go. <laughs> Look at all them. Look at all them scattering. Look at all that bait scattering out as I'm pulling this low guy in. Look at all that bait. Right in the bottom of the mouth. 
getting them fired up over there. Okay. Thanks, buddy. So all of this is just super shallow grass. I mean, super shallow water with a lot of grass. I only say super shallow because I can see just how much the water is down, but I'm guessing it's probably no more than three foot of water. Just judging by the lay of the land, judging by how much water is down, judging by how much grass I can see that is completely subsurface. I'm gonna put it right on the outside edge of that grass. Put it right into the grass on that one. I want to get it right on the outside edge, give it a quick retrieve, and then just kind of start popping it along as well. Oh, got something chasing over there. There we go. Oh, oh, that gummit, man. Did you hear that line scream? Oh. Well, I'm starting to think I may have wore them out over here on the ill swim jig. I still see some bait that I'm scaring up. <laughs> you want to make a liar out of me, huh? You want to make a liar out of me. That's all right. I can take the hit. I'll take being made a liar. All right. Last one over here, we're gonna move over and go throw that chatterbait. I lied, I lied to you guys. I said I was gonna throw the chatterbait, but after the success of that white and chartreuse little swim jig, I I just, I had to try, I had to tie on a different white and chartreuse bait. And I've got a double Colorado spinnerbait, little compact three eighths ounce spinnerbait. And I put the molten craw on there as the trailer. Oh, come on. Seriously? Right there in front of me? See, I mean, I just landed right in bait. They spooked as soon as I landed and started pulling. I mean, there's got to be some bass that are up close to there. Just waiting to go on. Waiting to go in for the kill. Yep. So I thought I would cast just a little bit further away from them. A little bit further away from the, where that bait was. And sure enough, there he was. Just hanging back waiting. There you are. There you are. Get up here. Don't let anybody accuse me of hanging a bait. So like I said, I saw that bait when I landed on it in the very next cast. I thought to myself, you know what? I need to pull it out just a little bit further away from the bank. Just in case there is a bass sitting back there watching and waiting, waiting for one of them to mess up. And sure enough, there he was. And he was doing exactly that, waiting for someone to mess up. Let's see if we can find another. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, little guy. Okay. I was just kind of walking, walking and pulling it along. And he hammered it. A little bit further away from the bank there. See if there's anything hanging back, waiting for something to come by. And there was, there, that's a better fish too. I mean, it feels like a better fish. He hit it hard. There we go. <laughs> yeah, 
that is a better fish too that is for sure it's the same technique right outside that bank line there where the wind is coming down casting into the wind reeling back with it thanks bud that's just right down this bank you know with this storm rolling in it might behoove me to walk back around the pond and get over closer to my car i've still got plenty of wind blown area over there too that i can go fish but i reckon that that's enough that's enough catches on this guy we showcase it in a couple of different techniques we can i think i think we could probably head back to the office <laughs> oh shoot school me school me the fool so i think we can head back to the office and uh talk a little bit more about the old turbo cross that spinnerbait's dirty though so we got to make one more cast with it z-man turbo cross and like I said, that color I was using that day was Molten Craw. I think it's the way I said it earlier, or that day, not earlier. This is a completely different day. But when I said that day, it sounded kind of like Molten Craw. I don't know if I was just kind of like thinking about like cake because I'm fat and I just was like hungry or what. But this is Molten Craw, the Z-Man Turbo Craws. Like I said, they're very similar to your Speed Craws. Great on a jig. A great trailer on a jig that allows tech is just going to last forever. Um, pain in the butt to rig. Anyone who has ever used Z Man with the Laz Tech knows that they are a bit of a pain. But luckily on that swim jig, it rigged up just fine. Didn't have any issues with it. But great jig trailer. I would just want to show you guys a couple other you know options of how to use this, how to rig it. And especially right now for this time of the year, I'm going to be throwing moving baits more so than I am a jig, a slow bottom moving bait if I'm just trying to put fish in the boat. So put it on your swim jigs, put it on your chatter baits, put it on your spinner baits when you want to present something slower with a spinner bait because a trailer on a spinner bait creates more resistance in the water and it does not really allow you to burn it contrary to popular belief. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. If you are not subscribed to the Monster Bass channel already, please do so. There is a button right down there, a little, little thing that says subscribe. And, you know, head over to my channel, give it a view, give it a look, subscribe, something like that. Give this video a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. I don't care. I just want to hear from you. I'll see you guys next time we're on the water.